Hello, and welcome to the second episode of the second series of the Game Guru tutorial series. Um, this episode, we're going to carry on looking at wind zones, um, but this one we're going to look at how to use them to expand the narrative of a story in the game, how to um, create the illusion of the passage of time, or to create a world bigger than it truly is, or to simply just expand the boundaries of your game world without expanding the boundaries of your system resources. Now, I've created a very, very simple level here. Um, there's been no style or finesse used. I just placed a simple wooden hut, put a metal door over the front of it, and sprayed trees all around. This just represents a very quick and simple uh, level for demonstration purposes only. Now, if we test game, so you can see it from the player's eye view, we um, start in the clearing, looking at this very simple wooden structure. Inside is nothing much, it's just plain and simple. Come outside, and you have trees, a blue sky, um, just standard simple basic. Uh, press escape, come back into the um, terrain editor, and now we're going to place down our zone. The markers, wind zone, and place it on the floor. Um, also note, I've saved this level, and it's called outside A. Uh, this is important later. Your wind zone, if you look at the properties, has a script, which controls its behavior, and a blank field called if used. Now, um, if you've watched a previous episode, you've seen how this works. If you tap the name of the level in this box, upon entering the zone in the standalone game, the software will um, load that level, allowing your character to proceed. Um, in this example, I want to go into that hut, which is actually a secret entrance to an underground base. So, I'll type base and apply the changes. So when my player enters this zone, he will enter the level entitled base. The next thing to do is to make sure that the player can't enter the zone without entering the hut. Otherwise, it'll look a bit silly. Just teleport into the next level by standing next to a wooden structure. So you can use the stars to create the boundary and all you really wanted to do is make it so A, you can't walk through the door without teleporting to the next level, otherwise you're going to be stood in an empty hut. And B, it doesn't come out of the hut, because as I said, you don't want to be teleporting to the next level by standing next to a structure. Um, if you can't see the stars, just bring it out a little bit. Make it easy for yourself. That's all. I'm going to shove him back in. There we go. So that will take us to the best level. File. Save. Now, I created these levels in advance um, because um, if you followed the first series, you've seen how long it can take to make a decent looking level. And I really want to demonstrate the functionality of the zones in this video. So if I load up base, which I have just made. All bases is an EBE on a flat um, terrain. There's nothing on the terrain, just one EBE surrounded with walls and some extra walls put in there. I've placed a start marker inside the EBE. I've used the same entity door on the outside and I've placed a door entity there in the frame and in the properties the script is just the default script so this door will not open so the player is contained within the EBE within the base I don't want the player to go anywhere in the world just here now the player might come in here to uh, discover an ancient secret or recover an alien artifact or assassinate a military leader or whatever the game demands. Um, but to leave, I want him to be able to go through the door, but I don't want him to go through the door 
physically, I want him to return to the outside level. So if I place another wind zone and shape it correctly to about the size of this corridor, um, again making sure it's not poking through side walls, because I don't want him leaving the dungeon, not the dungeon, the base, um, simply by standing in an adjacent room. Nor do I want him stood in front of the door without actually teleporting to the next level. Um, because that would look equally strange. So just a little bit of tweaking, just to get to the right size. Now, you don't want it too close to the door because you'll ram into the door. You don't want it too far away because you want him to actually get to the door before you teleport. Also, it's very important, do not put the start marker in the wind zone in the new level because you'll instantly just get sucked back in. I'm moving, sorry, I'm moving the actual EBE though. That was a mistake. I'll just pop it back and then move that about three squares in. I'll move the start marker here. So when the player starts, he can just advance into the base and do whatever he's come to do. And I'll save that as base. Save. So now, when I uh, play the game, I will appear in my outside terrain. I can enter the hut, come to the little base, do what I've come to do, and then leave the base and go back outside. But what if something's happened while I'm in here that's affected what it looks like out here? Such as... Um, a zombie virus or a missile strike or something terrible so I can if I want to take all these trees get rid of them if you was very um, detail orientated you could in theory put what I'm about to do now and replace them with um, in the same positions but I will just spray paint dead trees all around where these trees were remembering T terrain mode E entity mode it's a good way to get things off your cursor um, and if I test this game I'm going to change the terrain type because the default is grassy, the sky is blue, but now I think the sky should be sunset, so it's a deep red, or a, mm, no, that's still too nice. There is a red sky here, oh, there is, red, yeah, and I'm going to change the terrain to desert, something Something choked. There it is, yes. So, can imagine coming out into this? Well, we don't need to imagine. Now, be careful, don't save. Save as. And call it outside. B. Now, you might quite rightly think in that this will never be seen by anything because on the base level, the wind zone is pointing to outside A. So, we'll have to go to the base and change that. Um, by clicking, properties. Oops, I didn't even tap it in. Outside B. Apply changes. Now, I don't want the player to come back inside the base. So if I go back to it, side B, um, you might find you're doing a lot of back and forth in while you're just finding your feet. But um, as you complete sections of your game, you'll find you don't need to come back to sections that have been completed. Um, so for example, once this section's been done, you probably never need to go back in. 
Now you can take that and delete delete it because you don't want the player going back in. In fact, to add a touch of um, drama, you could maybe take a... Uh, what is it under classics? Under the classics? Yeah, it's classics. And with some rocks. I used some rocks at some point. Um... Okay, I can't find my rocks. Uh, let's say, let's just have a look actually. Historical? No. Uh, nature. Have some rocks in nature. Well, that'll do. Um, we'll get a rock section. And we'll shrink him down a bit because he's huge. Alright. And we'll, let's say, rotate him. And then place him down, down, and in. I'll squash him down a bit more. And so it looks like there's been a cave in inside this facility. And you are a start marker because to enter this bit of the world, you're coming from the base. So you'd go here and save. Now, remembering that the the game will start on the level from which you um, build the standalone, we now have to go to outside A, where we want to start, in order to build. Because I want to start there, go inside the base, then come out into a devastated um, wasteland. So, all happy, all good. We will build... No, we'll save standalone. Click. You don't want to save first? No, I keep on saving when I don't need to. I don't need to do it again. Uh, load level, load terrain. Um, it'll come up with a dialogue box. Once it's finished this. It's still pointing at my map bank, I believe. Yes, it is. So let's make a new folder and call it Wasteland. Select that folder save the standalone now that will build and um, the beauty of this system is you don't have to uh, create a list of um, scenes that you'd like to import and then link them all together because they are done automatically in the maps themselves so all you as a designer need to worry about is creating the links in the level and if you wanted a second base in the in the world you just make another um, cut or a cave or whatever put a wind zone in that and link it to another map called um, Bunker or Base 2 or whatever you want to call it it doesn't matter um, and as long as you keep them threads um, in your mind you will be able to create a myriad of interesting looking levels and worlds in piecemeal um, kind of like each individual element in its own space so you don't get cluttered it's not confusing it's not slowing your computer down and you can have a gigantic world just bits at a time so progress complete obviously it loads in the old level but it's actually now built the standalone so we'll never get there now and here is my map bank folder and there's the wasteland folder I created inside here outside a folder because this is the name of the level I built on, go inside there, outside a.exe. We'll run that and it will load the game like any other game. Now, as I mentioned in the last episode, um, you could give this folder to friends, family, and they could play your game on their system without Game Guru installed. And depending on how much time you spent in your game, it can be a very nice, enjoyable experience for them. Indeed, um, you can even submit to the showcase to show the world your game. So if we start, we should find ourselves in a, um, a verdant um, plain, well, not a plain, a valley, with um, an innocent looking wooden cabin in front of us, with a suspicious looking metal door. And there it is. We're in our game, we're going to look around, very nice. So we're going to go in... Oh. Again, sorry, I have background tasks going on. I'll have to sort that out. 
Um, so if we go to the cabin, enter the cabin, it loads the base level. And um, once it's finished loading, it shouldn't take too long. We are in the base. And uh, you obviously would put a roof on and actually something in here to do. So we're doing here, bang, 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 shoot, 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 find, find, find. Win, win, win. Right, let's get out of here. Back to the gate, back outside, and on we go. You know, loading level. Coming back outside with that champion prize. Um, but while you was in there, you might have been walking over trigger zones and sound zones with, like, bombs and devastation. It's, it's like, oh, my God, what's happened? How long was I in there? Oh, no, I can't get back in. And so... In just a few simple zones, you've created a narrative to your game. Um, it's a way to stop the players going back, because obviously this base has now been destroyed. The outside world has changed, and it's a good opportunity to recycle maps that you've already created. Um, because if you've created, let's say, a very complicated castle, or uh, a village, or a terrain, or a landscape, Simply by changing the sky, the terrain type, and killing off a few trees, you can reuse that entire level, uh, recycle it, with a whole new story arc. Um, so that's just something I wanted to go over this one, this time. Um, there's a few more things I'd like to touch on using the wind zones, which I will do um, this week, uh, before moving on to the next subject, um, which I'll unveil later in the week, about Wednesday. Um, until then, I hope you found this useful, and I hope it's given you some ideas about what to do and some exciting um, concepts and things that you'd like to try. Um, so I'll leave this with you, I'll say bye-bye, and I'll see you next time.